fever is a fairly common problem for many people. It's caused by an allergic reaction to tiny grains of pollen. That does leave us with the question of why it affects people in different ways, but also at different times of the year. Well, the pollen involved in hay fever comes from wind pollinated plants, as opposed to the pollen from flowers, which is normally transported by insects like bees. The flower pollen is usually actually fairly large, so even it does become airborne, fairly rapidly settles out of the air. But because the chances of an individual grain of pollen successfully finding its way to a receptive plant just by using the wind as a transport mechanism are so very remote, wind pollinating plants compensate for this by releasing billions of grains of pollen and by making them so light they float easily on the slightest breeze and so can stay airborne for an extended period of time. Unfortunately, it means that also at certain times of the year, a great many of these are inhaled through the noses of humans and then irritate the lining of the nose, and resulting in the body reacting and trying to remove the irritant, either by sneezing or by releasing an excess of mucus in the nose. This, however, is only temporarily. Even if one cluster of the irritating pollen are removed in this manner, there's still more pollen in the air to replace it. Alternatively, the pollen can settle on the surface of the eyes, causing them to water or become inflamed. Now, each variety of pollen, however, has a different surface texture, and so some people react to one type of pollen and not to others. These types of pollen are broken down into three major groups. So tree pollen, which basically is normally found around about springtime, grass pollen, which is around in early summer, and weed pollen, which is around in late summer. Depending on the particular weather conditions that an individual species of plant may consider favourable, it will be more or less likely to release significant amounts of pollen. Hence, say on a breezy, warm, humid, late spring day, there might be a high pollen count. Now, because humans have only relatively recently migrated away from the equatorial regions of the world, haven't yet fully adapted to the local conditions, around about a fifth of humans are affected by this seasonal allergic reaction. However, since it is an allergic reaction, there are basically two ways you can actually treat the problem, or at least main ways. First, most obvious, is to avoid pollen. And this is actually quite difficult since these grains of pollen are so light that even staying indoors won't completely protect you from exposure. So paying attention to pollen forecasts and avoiding areas with high density of the plants that you're actually allergic to may help reduce the problem at least to some degree. And the other is with the use of what's known as antihistamine. Now histamine is a chemical used in the body to fight infection. When the body has an allergic reaction to pollen it can overreact to what should just be a minor irritant and go into full infection fighting mode. And by using antihistamines especially before such an overreaction has actually taken place you can block the action of the histamines and therefore block or reduce the body's overreaction to the irritant. However, histamines are also found in significant amounts in alcohol. So if you're feeling down because you're suffering from hay fever, drinking alcohol may just make the symptoms significantly worse. So that's hay fever, an allergic reaction to tiny grains of pollen.